Let's reach to new heights with the brand new Height Thick FP120. Let's take a look at the specs right away. So here's the spec information. The claim to fame for this fan is it's 32 millimeters thick. A standard fan is 25, so that should add some extra pressure capability for it. It's got a high lifetime bearing. I suspect it's just a fluid dynamic bearing, but that's what they are calling it. 12 volts, 0.8 amps, so it does draw a lot of power, but it also is a 3000 RPM fan. So you're only going to be connecting one of these per fan header on your motherboard if you're going to do a direct connect. Otherwise, you're going to need to use their connect software. Uh, thicker. And you just saw how quickly they can magnetically attach to each other. So it's just got some pogo pins that transfers power, data, instrumentation readouts. So see these little holes? It can actually take in like airspeed or thermal measurements into that. So there's a thermal couple in it so you can get extra data through uh, the height uh, Nexus software. So you would have to install the software and get it all running like that. But even without it, they do work. So you got this pogo pin. It attaches just like that. Now, it does have an adapter, just a standard four pin, and it just slides into place. And this is what I've been using for all my testing, and it works flawlessly. Or you could plug this into like the Nexus Hub or their uh, cooler, the Q60, and it will handle all the data readouts and allows you individual control of each of the fans. I'm not gonna be covering the software, just because that is something different than my normal. Uh, anyways, it's got an extender. It's got uh, another hub link for the main access and a couple other extenders and stuff like that. So overall, it comes with all the accessories that you could possibly need for these fans. Let's take a closer look at the fan itself. So I think Height has done something fairly unique with this overall frame. So it's a little bit concave right here and it smooths out. Actually, that helps guide the air into this. So if you have this in a pull configuration, pulling the air through a radiator, it would enter this and you'd get temperature readouts or something like that. Um, it's got the rubber grommets built in right into the frame. So it's got four struts. The struts are a little bit on the thick side and they're basically completely flat, if you can see on there which means they will obstruct airflow, but the advantage of having them be flatter is it allows for more blade depth. But, and the blades get fairly close to these struts, which means they can get noisy as each time the blade bypasses over these struts, it creates noise. The distance between the fan blade and the hub is fairly tight, which is great to see, but the blades do get fairly close to the edge, which means in a pull configuration, this could potentially get noisy. So that is a little bit of a downside for this overall design. And I actually really dig this white, black, white appearance. This sort of, I'm gonna call it panda. Um, it gives a very unique visual, even without any RGB. And giving them props for, for style. And we'll just have to see how it does in the, all the rest of the testing. And of course, in value. The first of my tests is the case simulation test. The main way you want to use this is what size computer case do you plan on buying to stick this fan into. The first over here is the 6 inch mark and these distances are the distance from the front of the case to where the CPU air cooler is. This assumes that your PC is air cooled. So the 6 inch mark is representative of a small form factor case with a front to back airflow type design or a short throw distance like air blowing from the bottom of the case up towards your GPU. The case would be roughly holding 120 millimeter class fan in terms of the length from like the cooler again to that front slot. And the second key measurement location is the nine inch mark. This is your compact tower set. Think a case that can hold a standard ATX motherboard and GPU of equivalent length, but nothing beyond that. This would be equivalent to having two 120 millimeter class fans in that case, no extra length there. Then we've got the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is your standard mid towers, Fractal Meshify 2C, Corsair 5000 series, stuff like that. And in that 11 inch mark, you'd be able to hold a standard 320 millimeter or a 360 AIO, something of around that length. And then you've got at the 14.5 inch mark, sorry, it got cut off there. You've got the truly large towers. 
and these towers would be able to hold 340mm class fans in the bottom, a lot like the Fact Design Torrent. Let's see how it does. So first up with the testing is my noise normalized distance. Again, the distance on the bottom is inches from the front of the case, and well, the thick is not a case airflow fan. It drops off way too quickly, so it does not receive a recommendation for that use case. Let's keep going. At 100% pitoing fan signaling, it does better, but again, it's not well served. Just look at its noise level, 37 decibels versus 21, and decibels is not a linear system, it's logarithmic, so that's more than twice as loud. And how does it compare against other fans? Well, I cut it off at the bottom at 0.3 meters per second, because my anemometer's cutoff point for accurate readings is 0.3 meters per second. So, uh, kind of driving home that point that it's just not a case fan. At 100%, again, kind of defeats the purpose because it's ridiculously loud, but I have other fans that, some of which are 3000 RPM fans, or near there, others are not, and, well, you can see it's significantly noisier with, well, not being able to direct airflow very effectively. And in case you're wondering, here is how the airspeed versus uh, decibel reading looks for this fan. It is incredibly bad. Like, it, it went over 35 decibels by my readings. Again, I subtract out the uh, my noise floor. And it doesn't move very much air, and it's very noisy. The 9-inch mark was chosen because, well, most fans tend to drop off between the 6 and the 9-inch mark. So this one is in that category. And I'm starting to add this to my videos, Sone. Sone, I have a video about it, but it converts the logarithmic system of decibels into a linear system of Sone, and it helps accentuate just how worse it is at higher noise levels uh, compared to other fans. The next testing is airspeed to my CPU air cooler. I have acquired a radiator now, however, I don't have enough data to publish results for that. But note that in my testing so far, uh, I have seen that the airspeeds going to my CPU air cooler and the radiator are very similar, so I don't expect much shakeups with regard to that. And we'll see those results at the very end of the video. So first up, we have RPM versus airspeed. This is the graph on the left side, and this is a blade efficiency graph. It's how good is this blade design at pushing air through well, the cooler. And it lines up perfectly with my control fan. Oh, I think I forgot to say what my control fan is. It's three parts A12 fan 5 to one part A14. It is a blended fan to create a composite 130 millimeter class fan to get the advantages of both fans without too many disadvantages that each of them have. Then we have the graph on the right side, and this is noise versus air speed. Meters per second is the vertical. Decibels is the horizontal. And we see that the thick is underperforming versus my control fan. It is just quite a bit noisier than it. So let's keep things moving. How does it compare against other fans? Well, at noise normalized at my 11 uh, decibel reading, um, well, it is on the low side. It is underperforming versus many other fans, uh, especially like the A12 X25, which is way up here. So at noise normalized values, it's just not performing at a high enough level. Once letting it go balls to the walls, full speed, at 37 decibels, it's actually not the best. 
There are other fans that push more air through the air cooler than this one for lower noise values. Mind, it's still moving a lot of air. It's very impressive. But there are other fans that are just better than it. So kind of what we're seeing right now is you're buying this fan for the extras that it provides. And if we're taking a look at how its noise performance versus airspeed, so the horizontal is decibels, the vertical is meters per second, we can see that it is underperforming quite a bit compared to these other top end fans. We have the T30 in here, this uh, white line with the blue dots. We have the TLS12W is in here. Uh, it's got the teal line with the pluses. We have the P28, which is one of the fans I regard as a top end. It's this white line with a red dot. The Grand Tornado is in here, as well as like the TLB12 Extreme. Apex Stealth does better than it. And of course, the P12 Max White, which I just recently reviewed, all are outperforming this fan. And taking a look at the same data, but this time in Sone, helps accentuate what I'm talking about. So letting it go to Sone really accentuates the high-end noise values, just how noisy and far kind of off to the right it goes, where it's not, I mean, it's gaining airspeed quite steadily, but the many other fans are just higher performance for lower noise values. And lower noise values are, of course, to the left. So there are fans that will perform better than it. And the last set of tests here are my CFM test, blowing air through a tube. And the first one is the left, left side, and it's RPM versus CFM. So again, it's the blade efficiency. And the thick is performing right in line with my control fan, actually slightly outperforming it, I'd say. And if we take a look at the right side, decibels versus that CFM reading, well, the thick is still underperforming compared to CFM. And if we compare it against other fans I've tested, it is on the lower end of the graph in my noise normalized results uh, compared to other ones like the T30 is substantially better. And if we let it go full tilt, once again, the thick is towards the top of the graphs. It's in the realm of these other 3000 RPM fans, but there are other ones that just perform better than it. And one thing that my graphs are missing is longevity testing. I hope to add that in the future. Unfortunately, just the size of my channel isn't quite there yet. It is viewers like you that will allow me to implement that sort of testing to acquire the capability to just do long time testing. And of course, if you buy these fans and you put in the comment section your own experience, that really does help me. But if you're looking for a way to help support this channel, hitting that hitting that subscribe button or joining me on Patreon or uh, being a YouTube member really does go a long way in supporting this channel and making buying fans and the test equipment very possible. Without viewers like you, it, this, this channel will stagnate. So going back to this, uh, Height is pretty new as a brand in terms of making fans, so it is unclear whether it's going to outlive these other fans or not in terms of how long the bearing lasts, which could be a quality of life improvement. But again, that is an unknown with it. And if we take a look at its decibel noise level in decibels versus the CFM, it is where we expect it to be as compared to the other fans around it, underperforming just a little bit compared to the other high-end fans. And last but certainly not least is the value proposition. This is performance per dollar as to what you would expect from this fan. So it's basically taking what performance value I got and dividing it by dollar. It does not take into account the extras like the software, the, the thermal sensor that's built into it, the, the specialized connectors, those, or the visual appearance, or RGB. It doesn't take into account that. So it's just the performance of the fan that you get. And so the thick is way underperforming. It's actually in line with the T30 in terms of its value. At 100%, sorry, I do apologize, the 6-inch one is not... Uh, set up uh, smallest to biggest just uh the way my excel template is doesn't allow for that but it is clearly well towards the bottom matter of fact it's in line with what the t30 is it's actually a little bit less than that again this is for the case airflow so at the 11 inch mark it's basically zero and at 100 percent, it's so close to, you don't buy it as a case fan okay cfm testing well it's still pretty terrible value. It's actually under the T30 here. And at 100%, it's still a pretty bad value under the T30. And through the CPU air cooler, it's just a little bit under the T30. 
and at 100% it's a little bit better than the T30, but still well towards the bottom. Alright, that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, this is the raw data. The raw data does belong to me. If you wish to use it for your own personal use, you may do so. If you wish to use it in any sort of publication, written journal, or anything like that, I do ask they reference me and my channel. Now that that is out of the way, would I recommend this fan? Well, sort of. The Nexus software looks very intriguing. Being able to individually tune each fan individually on a radiator if it allows it to work like that. That is very cool. And each fan having a thermal sensor so that you can tie uh, the thermals coming through the radiator to the fan. It also wasn't particularly noisy in a pull configuration. So uh, that's all very, very cool. It's just fairly expensive and doesn't quite have the performance that you would expect from such an expensive fan. Now, how does it perform on the actual radiator, the, the thick Q60? Um, and does it need such a thick fan for it? Well, I don't have a Q60 to test on, but I would surmise that other fans on it may not perform as well because that is such a big AIO that it needs the extra static pressure that this fan can generate just to effectively blow air through it. Uh, but that is my guess. So if you're buying the Q60, it comes with the fans, you're all set. If you want to stick these fans on your Arctic liquid freezer, just stick with the stock fans or replace those stock fans with P12 Maxes. Um, they're going to be better served. So that's kind of where I am with this fan product at this time. I think it's very cool, and I look forward to seeing what hype makes in the future. Anyways, um, if you like my content, do please think about joining as a YouTube member or uh, becoming a Patreon member. That really does grow help with this channel. I understand that that is not a contribution that everybody can make, but go ahead and, and hitting that subscribe button does go a long way in helping this channel grow. So I thank each and every one of you, as well as my Patreon members. You guys completely rock and well, you're helping keeping this channel going. Uh, anyways, thank you very much. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.